At first, the beginning of the end seemed like any other day. The sun was bright and warm but not overpowering. Leaves, still green, danced in the warm breeze. I was ashamed to admit that I didn't notice the lack of bird singing at the time. I woke up at my normal time, made and hid my bed, ate my cereal, washed the dishes, dried them, put them in their proper places. Next I showered, shaved, gave my apartment a quick wipe down, and relaxed with my book, just like every other normal morning on one of my days off. When my watch started to beep, I finished the chapter I was on. I only had two paragraphs left, so why not? and locked the door behind me as I started off to the grocery store. The first block of my walk, I was lost in the daydream of Molly, her and I picnicking in the park. Cliché, I know, but that's what I wanted. To see the sunlight shining on her soft strawberry hair, sitting on the robin egg blue basket, a half-eaten sandwich made by me in her right hand as she laughed, her head tilted back, a tear of joy sparkling in her eyes her left hand lightly touching her throat. She was beautiful, even in my dreams. I slowly started to pay more attention to my surroundings when the dogs that normally announced my presence to their owners were nowhere to be seen. After the second block, I noticed the toughest dog I would pass by cowering under its owner's truck. It shocked me so much I stopped and stared. For years, this dog never missed an opportunity to rush to the fence, growl, bark, and dig at the fence until I was over a block away. I was thankful that the owners were smart enough to have a fence too tall for the beast to jump. Today though, he was whimpering softly, shaking violently, and I swear I could see his eyes were wet with tears. Slowly I continued on my way. It was then I noticed that there were no birds chirping, no cats bathing in the sun, a few dogs were huddled at the end of chains, all of them behaving the same way as the dog under the truck. Every muscle in my body was beyond tense by the time I reached the corner of the sidewalk at the schoolyard. As soon as I saw Scarlet though, I could feel the tension melting away. She was laughing, standing in a circle as several of her friends playing a game I didn't recognize. It seemed to be centered around hand movements. She tossed her head back, sunlight playing in her hair as her untamed laughter escaped her lips. It sounded like music. It continued on and on and on. It started getting more and more wild. M much too loud. The kids around her stopped their game and stared at her. Within moments, the whole playground, kids as well as adults, were silent, unmoving. Everyone was staring at Scarlet. I stopped walking and for the first time in her life, I just stared at Scarlet. Her head was no longer thrown back with joy. She was leaning forward slightly, her eyes wide and full of fear. Her hands fluttered frantically beside her like hummingbird wings, then covered her mouth unsuccessfully, muffling her laughter, then fluttered at her sides again. Her light blue dress slightly shifted in the breeze and from her movements. Tears filled her eyes and flowed over into her cheeks. Her laughter became unnaturally high, pitched and fast. It sounded like a crazed serial killer clown in a B-movie, sped up multiple times. There was no sound other than her laughter. I must have lost it because even though her laughter sounded sped up, all movements seemed to slow to a crawl. Scarlet's small fingers slowly glided through the air, her hair almost still in the air. The tears seemed frozen on her face. Time seemed to stop existing. In reality, I couldn't have been there more than 20 seconds. Then suddenly, for no seen reason, her laughter stopped. Only the trees and the breeze moved. Only the leaves made sound. I meant to move towards Scarlet. I wanted to rush to her, take her in my arms and try to come and comfort her until Molly could be here to arrive, before a single muscle got the message from my brain to move. It happened. It looked like every organ, every blood vessel, everything within Scarlet's skin burst. Her skin bulged and stretched from the pressure of her insides for several seconds before her body collapsed to the ground. Her wide eyes stared straight into mine, blood drained from her nose, eyes and mouth, and ears. Soon her beautiful blue eyes were coated with blood. A large pool of blood quickly formed underneath her. Shock and horror slammed into me. I felt the ground beneath me drop into a non-existence. Before I was able to collect myself, the ground rushed back up at me as I slammed onto it. I never took my eyes from Scarlet, even for half a moment. The play on remained silent for a few heartbeats before the screams and chaos started. Children and teachers alike screamed, their throats roar. A few rushed for Scarlet. Strangely, no one blocked my sight of Scarlet. 
not even once. So much shouting, so much screaming. Then laughter. So much laughter. Giggles, chuckles, full on laughing. It came from everyone on the playground. They all started in different degrees, but they all became more hysterical. Faster and faster. Fear filled all their eyes. Some just stood there stunned, laughing. Some ran in circles laughing, some tugged at the shirts of the adults laughing, some curled up in the dirt full tantrum mode, but they weren't crying, they were laughing. Tears flooded their eyes, then one by one, silent explosions. Eyes bulged, skin stretched, blood poured. One by one, they all dropped. Ringing filled my ears as the world fell into silence. I tried to cry out or maybe throw up, but passed out instead.